Good morning. Welcome to today's webcast, Mitigating Uncertainty in Pipeline Inspection with the World's Only uh, Subsea CT Scanner, Discovery. I'm Kurt Abraham, Editor and Chief Forecaster of World Oil, and I will be your moderator today. As subsea assets age, corrosion issues start to arise, and the integrity of those assets is compromised. With the combination of non-intrusive discovery fast scans and extended scans, operators can quickly identify and accurately determine wall loss integrity flaws of both pickable and unpickable subsea pipelines all in real time and while online. This uh, webcast with case studies will illustrate how operators can obtain statistical confidence that their pipeline and pipeline system is within the acceptable tolerance specification, validate ILI inspection and eliminate operational risk associated with ILI usage, eliminate the cost associated with coating removal, and ensure that there is no loss to production or deferment of revenue during inspection campaigns. Joining us today for the event is Jim Bradlett, Business Development Manager for Sub-C at Tracerco. Uh, Jim Bramlett is one of Tracerco's most experienced upstream business development professionals with over 25 years of experience in the oil and gas sector. Overall experience encompasses infield, operational management, commercial, and business development. He has a proven track record of working with major oil and gas operators to develop technological solutions to solve their most intriguing diagnostic challenges. This includes major achievements such as securing over $1 million in funding from a major operator for the development of a multi-award winning subsea diagnostic technology for pipelines. This technology went on to successfully deliver $10 million worth of savings on remediation that would have been ineffectual for the type of buildup and savings of around a third on the cost of the inspection campaigns for other clients. Now, just some general housekeeping notes before we get started. Uh, following the presentation, we'll have a short question and answer session. You can participate in the Q&A session by asking questions at any time during the presentation. Just type your question into the Q&A box located on the bottom left corner of your screen, then click the Submit button. You may enlarge the slide window at any time by clicking on the Box button on the top right corner of the slide area. The slides will advance automatically throughout the event. If you experience problems with the program, please press the F5 on your keyboard to refresh the presentation. You can also uh, visit the webcast help guide by clicking on the help button below the slide window. So now let's get started on this morning's presentation. Jim, take it away. Thanks, Kurt. I appreciate it. First off, I'd like to uh, say thank you to everybody for their time. We know how valuable it is under the circumstances of the market today. And with that, we'll go ahead and get started on today's uh, webinar, which is going to focus on how we can mitigate uncertainty in pipeline inspection with the world's only subsea CT scanner, Discovery. Our objectives today will be to demonstrate how the unique advantages of discovery can offer significant value to your subsea inspection projects. We'll do this by discussing how the operators can quickly identify and accurately determine wall loss integrity flaws. We'll also discuss how operators can pinpoint the exact location, extent, and nature of blockages and or restrictions within their flow lines. We'll highlight a couple of examples uh, of applications, typical applications that the discovery technology can be used on, and we'll showcase uh, several case studies that we have to date. Before we get started in that, for those that are unfamiliar with Tracerco, just a little outline of who we are. Uh, Tracerco has been in business for approximately 60 years now. We are a division of the Johnson Matthey Corporation. We're heavily involved with refining and petrochemical, uh, of course, our subsea applications. We also have a division that focuses heavily on reservoir tracer technologies, as well as specialty uh, measurement instruments for the industry. A little background into CT technology and what is it? CT is just an acronym for computed tomography. We use penetrating radiation 
to make multiple predictions of the samples being inspected or positions all the way around it. From these, a reconstruction algorithm produces a map of attenuation corresponding to a slice through the sample. This is called the tomogram. The tomogram is then scaled so that the cross-section is displayed in units corresponding to density. Basically, in layman's terms, it's just like you would think of a medical CT scan that you would get, with the one exception. Based on the low dense material of a human body that we we would go through under a normal medical CT scan, we use or we're forced to look at high dense materials, typically quite a bit of material within a pipeline, of course the complex structure of the pipeline, as well as the metal. So due to that, we use a more penetrating radiation. So we'll start off today kind of briefly going over the asset integrity side. Why would you use discovery for asset integrity? One, we can eliminate the cost and the risk of removing subsea coatings, can quickly detect the presence of metal loss anomalies. We now have the ability to look at the raw scan data and fast screen to increase our overall throughput of the total inspection length and time. We can assist with ILI inspections, characterize deposits prior to the inspection, validate ILI findings if ILI is used, and also we can use it as an alternative to ILI campaigns in general. We remove the risk of the pipeline cleaning, eliminates interruption to production and normal pipeline operations, therefore no deferment of revenue. Reduce operational intervention time so critical decisions can be made immediately by data obtained online, and that is also on the back deck of the vessel. So I think that's a, the key component to this is that all of our data, be it flow assurance or asset integrity, is obtained while we're in the field in real time. And this is obviously going to allow for quick decision making. Obtain a complete picture of the integrity or complex pipe system, so pipe and pipe, and we'll go over the different uh, examples, pipe bundles, so forth. By coupling all this together, we have the opportunity to save over a third of the cost of your overall subsea inspection. So when we start our inspection, we look at the background data. And this is where we were able to move into the fast screening technology. So this is an example uh, looking at some of the data that's coming in real time on the vessel that our guys are looking at. And if you look at the image on the left, that's an example of just one lap around the pipe. And the reason that we feature this is if we, if we try to analyze what we're looking at here on the far right and the left of the left-hand image is the actual pipe wall. Anything in between is, or excuse me, is the pipe edge. Anything in between, you can see the, the swirls that are showing up is obviously a defect that is within the pipe, and we can quickly visually pick that up. As we continue to scan over time and collect more data, the image clarifies up, and you can see that on the right-hand image, the sharpness and the clarity that, that comes in. These are real-time projections that, that we get offshore, and it'll take us from looking into this to, or excuse me, I'm sorry, looking on the left-hand side is our quick scan data. Once we go to uh, a full scan data set, then we can take this, which is the image on the right, and produce what we call as a tomogram. So this is where we can actually piece all that data together, those projections, and produce the image. So if the anomaly is observed in the sinogram, then we can quickly produce the tomogram and take a look at it and give a visual representation of the pipe wall. Here we can see the multiple anomalies were detected, and you could see that in the prior uh, image where there was multiple bands running around the pipeline. We can also at this point go in and do our full measurements uh, and data analysis with on the pipe wall. Also, as far as our in, within our final report, uh, we're able to basically lay open the pipeline. So if you can look at the image on the right, that is uh, angles of degrees around the pipeline. 
and then our measurements in wall thickness. We will get supplied from the operator upper level limits and lower level limits. We have a quick visual indicator here that everything is within the pipe wall limits uh, that the operator has specified. Anything that was out of limits will immediately be a red flag and we can go in and from this image we can identify on the tomogram exactly where the anomaly is located and provide full measurements uh, and characterize the issue as it is. Our typical tolerances for general wall loss, just as a reference, is plus or minus 1% with about, or one millimeter with about 80% confidence. Also upon, or available to the operators, depending on how they want to see the data presented, we can also present a color map. This happens to be over a one meter section. So we can take all of our measurements and put them into a color map so you can get a, a, just a, a slight different representation of, the, of what the wall features look like and where they're located in, in the image. Upon request, we can also do what we call a stitch together and provide a 3D image where we actually take multiple projections, stitch them together and put them into a 3D image. This is pretty interesting here is this actually was a concrete coated pipeline and we can actually stitch the images together and look at some of the deformation within the concrete coating itself. Again, we talked a little bit earlier about the wall uh, or the upper and lower level limits uh, provided by the operator. Once we set those limits and we start obtaining our scan data, we can quickly identify anything that falls outside of the limits set. Again, we can locate where that uh, feature is on the pipe. We can quickly go over to the tomogram, pull it up, allow the operator to look at it on vessel and decide whether this is a feature that is of concern to him or to the operator and be able to quickly move forward or go into further analysis by doing more uh, repetitive scans within that same general location. Now a little bit about flow assurance and remediation and what the, the, the instrument does. And the reason why we bring this up is, is within a single scan, we get both the in wall integrity data as well as a look inside the pipeline to be able to identify if there's any buildups or blockages or what's going on within the flow characterizations. And this is all done again in the same exact scan. So no matter which direction or whether we're on an asset integrity uh, inspection itself or whether we're on a primary focus of a flow assurance inspection, we provide both sets of data every time that we do a full tomographic scan. So obviously, as operators, you face the problem of determining where the exact location, the extent, and the nature of the buildup and or blockage is in order to take the proper corrective action without risking damage to the subsea pipeline or risking further loss of production. Over time, and, and part of the reason why we have been pushed into this technology is that research has indicated that over 50 to 80 percent of remediation efforts fail on the first attempt and that's for a multitude of reasons but primarily the reason is it's not having a firm understanding of either exactly what the material within the flow line actually is or what extent it is so why use the discovery for flow assurance one we can quickly visualize flow assurance issues online and non-intrusively. So enable rapid critical decisions to be made. Again, falls back to providing real-time data on, on the vessel itself. Determine the exact location, the extent, and the nature of the blockage in real time. Now we're able to unlock the full potential of your subsea pipeline and get the remediation done right the first time so that you know what size vessels, what chemicals, whether you need to go mechanical, whatever the reason is, now you have the information firsthand to know exactly what you're up against to start with. So a little bit about the history of the technology. We started out many years ago doing basic what we call deposition surveys, which is now 
termed Explore technology, where we have the ability to do a simple cross-sectional measurement within the pipeline and determine if there is a blockage within the pipeline and give some idea of about the extent of it, how far it is. However, we do run into issues with being able to go in and actually tell you exactly what that material is or give you a visual representation of uh, what the extent of it is, what the character is, characteristics of the blockage is, and so forth. Now we're able to actually go in and give you a visual representation of the structure of the blockage as well as the exact locations uh, and are there any changes within that structure going out and we'll show that in a pretty unique case study here to come. But this is a quick quick example of what we're looking at. If we look at the far right image, we just got basic levels. So we got a water level, oil levels, a slight foam level sitting on top. Here we can look at an actual uh, picture of a hydrate within a flow line. And then you can look at the far right-hand image as the flow goes around, what we see from an actual hydrate. Now, this happens to be a much more like snowy type hydrate. So we've got some uh, fluid level in the bottom of the pipeline. We've got a gas layer. We've also got some around the, the actual pipe wall, some heavy buildup, uh, gas infusion within, and then a, a lot of snowy mixture going around. So it just gives you a visual representation of what the hydrate actually looks at, looks like versus just a solid bore hydrate. And then, of course, into the remediation effort, it's obviously a great value to understand how much progress you're making. Are we getting? Are we actually disassociating the formation, uh, or have we reached a certain point? And at what speed are we? Uh, making progress through the remediation effort. Some other examples, uh, just so you get a visual representation of what the tool produces. Uh, if you look at the uh, upper right hand, these are actual real world images uh, taken in the Gulf of Mexico. This happens to be a pipe and pipe system. Um, so you can see the outer pipe, you can see the inner pipe, we see the asphaltine structure. We know this based on, uh, again, the densities that we find in there. If we look at the image on the far right, different set of circumstances. We have flow situation in, but we have a heavy scale buildup in the pipeline. And finally, on the last is a much drier asphaltine with trapped or infused gas pockets within it. And you can see the dark colored sections are actually gas, trapped gas, within the, the asphaltine structure itself. A little bit about applications, where the technology can be used. Um, concrete coated uh, pipelines is one of the biggest ones, um, as well as pipe and pipe, and we'll show some images on that. Just to give you an example here, this is actually a real world image of a concrete coated pipeline. Uh, if you look at the blue image on the external, that's the actual concrete. We can even see the individual rebars running through the concrete. Then, of course, the red is the pipe wall that now we can take measurements of, as well as production on the inside. This happens to be obviously a gas line. So again, we get 360 degrees of wall thickness map at every location that we scan. Again, no coating removal, no need to remove the coating. We can look at ovality uh, under the coating, as well as look at the actual condition of the coating itself, and if you wanted to, even down to the individual rebars within the concrete coating. Flexible applications, this is pretty interesting. We were, uh, as part of the original test, we've only done this under test circumstances. And you can see where a individual armor layer or wire was removed, and we can quickly identify that. Now, I want to preface this on this particular image because this was a Generation 1 tool. This was the very first, uh, one of the very first images ever produced by a sub-CCT scanner. However, we have uh, moved up quite a bit uh, with the technology and further enhance the technology. And we're currently under a testing protocol right now with uh, a third party company as well as several operators involved where we are actively doing blind testing on inspection of flexible pipes. So we're real excited to see what the technology can actually uh, produce. 
under the current circumstances and the current tools used. The lower level image is again, it's much more of a 3D image where we can actually stitch images together. And this was just some internal carcass damage. And, and if you look at the image, we can see the uh, uh, carcass damage within the tomogram as well. So again, we'll be doing uh, quite a substantial amount of testing under flexibles here in the next six weeks. Pipe and pipe applications. Uh, again, with concrete coated, pipe and pipes are probably another one of the biggest applications that we use to date. We're able to scan, the technology is able to scan through both layers of the metal pipe. So we can produce inspection data on both as well as provide information from uh, the production data inside the production pipe as well as the annulus and annulus inspection. We can look for whether the pipe and pipe is centrally located as well as a validity of either pipe and produce uh, full inspection data uh, as well. Pipe bundles. This was actually a pre-project test that we did, a qualification, where we just built a rig uh, in order to look uh, and see if we could see, based on the structure of the multiple pipes, whether we could actually see and, and pull quality inspection data. And this is just a quick image to show uh, the three separate pipes uh, within uh, the wall, or excuse me, within or the two production pipes, sorry about that, within the carrier pipe. The carrier pipe quickly we can identify uh, the seam well as well as if we look at the bottom of the carrier pipe we see a light blue uh, layer so to speak laying down at the bottom. That's a rust layer that we were able to pick up um, and show the client the the clarity of the image that we can we can produce and, and measure. Piggyback lines. Uh, this was an actual project that we did, and, and we set up a, a test rig in order to do it. There was no way to inspect, uh, externally inspect the actual flow line because of the location of the piggyback line and get 360 degree uh, inspection data. So we actually built a carrier rig to go over both pipes, and then of course the discovery tool can clamp onto that and spin around both pipes. It was pretty interesting on this particular one. Um, if you look, we can actually see every bolt uh, and, and, and brace bar within the carrier uh, system that we built. Obviously, we can still see the production pipe and pull full data on it. And if needed, we could have provided full inspection data on the gas carrier line or the piggyback line. What was unique about this is that they weren't expecting any issues. They were expecting a dry gas situation in the piggyback line. And once we got offshore, if you look at the tomographic image, now this was a very quick image, so we weren't looking for detail in pipe wall. We were just looking uh, at content, and we were able to identify a definite water layer, a uh, water laydown layer within the gas uh, lift line, which was quite a surprise to the operator. And then riser applications and, and complex uh, imagery. These are actual uh, risers that were looked at in order to uh, get some life extension data or life extension permitting. Uh, again, just shows the complexity. The tool can obviously easily go in both the horizontal and vertical uh, planes. And here we're looking at pipe inside a pipe and pipe inside a pipe inside a pipe with umbilicals uh, and so forth. So again, it gives you a good visual representation. And of course, from this, we can go in and pull full inspection data as well as flow assurance data. And then finally, pipe caissons. Uh, difficult to do. This was actually under a test situation where we had quite a few pipes within a very large caisson. Uh, looking at examples of how we can see or could we see the clarity with such a complex structure. So a little bit about some case studies on current projects that we've done. So we were, in this particular case study, 
Uh, we were asked to come in and provide vital data for the offshore life extension project as well as look at overall flow assurance health check. Okay, so the primary focus of this was to pull the inspection data to be able to go in and and get permitted to extend the life of this particular uh, flow line. Once we went through and did all of our scans, now if you look at the images at the bottom, here we've just cut out pieces of the internal pipe uh, for this particular representation. We were able to quickly go in, again, wall data uh, provided upper level, upper and lower level limits from the operator where we can actually map that uh, in the wall on the right, if you look at the, the wall plot data. And then if we translate that, this just happens to be put in grayscale uh, for this particular customer as we looked into it. We were able to go in and identify that based on the information from the operator, we were able to verify that the risers were uh, in the locations of scan well within uh, the limits that they had project or, uh, provided us. What was interesting, though, if you look at the far right image, we were able to identify some scale buildup within the flow line that was unexpected. So as a subsequent benefit to the actual uh, integrity data that we provided, we were able to identify this layer, provide that information to the operator, and allow them to do whatever uh, they needed to do at this point to ensure that this scale does not build up to a problem or that they can go ahead and online remediate it uh, however they need to. Case study number two was a massive uh, inspection campaign that was done in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, it was really interesting that out of all the scans that we did, the integrity data that we provided allowed them to get a lifetime extension on the on the pipeline. It was the first one that we're aware of that was actually granted. Based on the customer's feedback with all the uh, data that we provided, we saved them directly a little over $10 million on remediation efforts that would have been ineffectual. Now, we knew going into the inspection campaign, part of the reason why they wanted to use the tool was that they knew that they had uh, some buildup within the pipeline. There were some definite concerns with introducing uh, anything into the system that could get stuck uh, or would defer uh, any side of production or revenue. When we were able to go in, we identified very quickly that they had a pretty substantial scale issue and not a wax issue. Uh, so their initial uh, ideas to go in and remediate the scale would have been uh, obviously quite unsuccessful in you know, helping them to maintain the uh, integrity of the flow or the flow assurance system. So quite a bit of savings uh, just in fully understanding what material was in the in the pipeline itself. The third case study that we'll go over real quickly. Uh, is, uh, again, we were launched in the Gulf of Mexico to look at a flow assurance situation. Uh, they had attempted multiple remediations at, at this point with no success. Um, so they asked us to come in and, and do a full profile of the pipeline to help understand what was going on internally. This was a pipe and pipe system. And if we break this out into zones from the plec going back towards the platform, zone one, we were able to identify very quickly that they had a massive xylene head just sitting on top of whatever material was in the pipeline. Uh, they had attempted this remediation before, and you know, so obviously we were expecting to see uh, some xylene in the system. Zone two we were able to identify that this was a transition period where it was primarily xylene. As we went along within this section, we saw the transition into a solvanic uh, asphaltine over into uh, a full bore block asphaltine. So we, we just kind of noted this to them that this was a trans, or, uh, transition area where we probably had communication within a certain point of this 
but at some point the communication within in this section would would cease to exist. Zone three was solid asphaltine blockage, uh, full bore dry asphaltine. We were able to identify that there was absolutely no communication or possible communication through this section. Zone four, we started making a transition from just the solid hard block asphaltine to more of an asphaltine deposit with trap gas. We call this what we call the honeycomb. Now the question presented itself is, do we have communication to this point, or is this is this a full bore uh, opening, or is this just trap gas? Because of the sensitivity of the system itself, we were able to uh, get assistance from the operator actually gas pressure this side of the potential blockage, and we would be able to identify, or we were able to identify, where within this section we had communication due to due to the pressure or the density increased in the pressurized gas versus non-pressurized gas and where it was not so that we knew we had small blockages within this section so this particular image had no communication whatsoever so that we knew we didn't have any communication uh, uh, through this section and then finally the zone five is where we saw the transition from the dry asphaltine into more of a liquefied asphaltine where it was starting to slough over time. And actually, uh, you can see here that even though there is definite structure within the asphaltine, it is pretty much sloughed down and laid down in the, in the bottom of the pipeline. And we're able to assess here that they had about 60% bore. However, we do know that they do have communication to this point. So again, now that they have all this data, they have a firm understanding of exactly what the issues they face. Uh, and can put forth a proper plan to go uh, address it. And then finally here recently we did uh, several of our first uh, uh, inspection campaigns utilizing both full tomographic scanning as well as fast scanning. This particular case study was a large uh, diameter gas export line that was done in the Arabian Gulf. And here you can quickly uh, see along the seam weld uh, where we've got some some defects or some issue, some wall loss right at the seam weld section within the pipe. And we were able to scan such a large section uh, or multiple large sections along the pipeline by utilizing the fast scan technology. So the way that we particularly or the way that we set up this particular inspection. Once we have known locations that the operator would like to go and inspect or take a look at, we go in and for this particular one, we set up where we did a full uh, tomographic image. Then we step and did a quick scan and look for any anomalies or changes from the norm of that initial scan. So initial scan, we saw no defects in the pipe wall. We were able to step, scan, quickly identified that there's no defects, step, scan, no defects, and so forth until we either hit the next section that was identified as a target full tomographic scan, or if we saw a deviation from that norm, then that automatically triggers a full scan. So this particular issue where we saw uh, on the previous slide where we saw the, the seam well feature, as soon as we hit that, uh, it obviously triggered an automatic go into a full tomographic scan, and we continued those full scans until that particular anomaly went away so that we can characterize the length uh, and give the operator uh, a full representation. So to recap just a little bit on discovery performance, uh, provides accurate measurement and wall thickness through any type of protective coating, and that's a, the key issue here. So there's there's no pipe prep other than access, whether it's concrete coating, uh, complex piping systems, pipe and pipe systems, standard pipe systems. Uh, it doesn't matter to us uh, for this particular technology. It can be used, obviously, on both unpiggable and piggable pipelines uh, with any level of complex geometry. We are currently fully operational and field-proven TRL uh, Level 7, or API 17N. 
We are DNV RP8203 certified. The tool is currently capable uh, of 3,000 meters water depth. Uh, and right now we can do pipes up to 26 inch total OD. And I'll preface this by saying that's just a physical limitation of the tools that we currently have in our arsenal. We can go larger. It's just a manufacturer, or it's just a, a uh, an issue of, of building an actual larger tool. There's no physics limitations uh, to that that we know of right now. So just quickly in summary, by use of this technology, we can obtain detailed integrity data of all types of pipe walls, eliminates the cost and risk of removing coating subsea, eliminate interruption to production and normal pipeline operations, so again, on time or in real time and online. Visualize both flow assurance issues online and non-intrusively, as well as uh, providing the full integrity data of the pipeline all in the same individual scans. And then, of course, reduce the overall cost of remediation campaign, campaigns by knowing the exact amount, structure, and type of deposits or blockages within your system. So with that, we'll take any questions. All right. Thanks, Jim. Uh, we will now transition to the question and answer portion of our webcast. And folks in the audience, you can continue to submit your questions in the Q&A box located on the bottom left corner of your screen. So please go ahead and submit any additional questions now. Uh, Jim, I believe you have a colleague with you here to help in the answering, correct? Uh, Callum Greaves? I think Callum will, will, is going to assist with just uh, uh, helping to structure some of the questions so that, that we can answer it, but I think I'll, I'll probably be taking all the okay. questions. Okay. All right. Okay. Mighty fine. Uh, let's start with our first, first uh, question, which is, what is the accuracy of the scan data? So the accuracy is currently is plus or minus one millimeter with about 80% certainty. Okay. Question number two, what depth is the discovery instrument rated to? It is currently rated to 3,000 meters. Okay. Here's another shorty. Can the instrument inspect both vertical and horizontal pipelines? Yes, it can. We have done this on multiple occasions. Uh, and I believe I showed a couple of examples where we're actually uh, doing riser uh, applications currently. All righty. Here's something a little more complex. Uh, how long does a full scan take before a, a typical pipeline before moving the tool? So that is all predetermined uh, through a pre-project test, but in general, we're right now, if you take a range of pipelines, obviously it's depending on the complexity of the pipeline itself, but each individual full tomographic scan uh, is running between five and ten minutes. All righty. We have a gentleman here from uh, one of the operators who is asking, how strong is the signal? Can you image soft materials like synthetic mooring lines? Well, I'm not sure how to answer how strong uh, is the signal. Um, it's it's relative to uh, radiation strength and attenuation. So uh, I guess I, you know, I'm trying to understand the question, but if you look at um, um, the time it takes for us to retrieve enough data within a pipe system depends on the complexity and the amount of materials that we scan through, if that makes any sense. So um, it's typical principles of time, distance, and shielding. What well, The second part is mooring lines. Is that, I believe, the question? For that, that is material? correct. Yes. Um, Can you image soft materials like that? We, we can image soft materials. So depending on what you were looking at within the mooring line there is a possibility obviously we we have a full wet test or wet tank uh, capabilities to test on anything here in our office in Pasadena as well as over in uh, Billingham in the UK now 
the one thing that we have to look at is the difference in densities. Okay, so because we're density based, we're looking for or we're visualizing changes in density, if that helps at all. All righty. Uh, let's move on to another question here. A gentleman has asked, how large a pipeline can be skinned and how do you handle subsea pipelines that get buried? Okay, so currently we're able to go up to anything that is 26 inch and that is total OD. So that's 26 inches and that includes coating uh, is our physical limitation of the tool now. So currently there is two different modes uh, as far as access to the pipeline. We do have to have 360 degrees of external access to the pipeline. So depending on what the functionality of the inspection is, be it flow assurance or be it asset integrity, we will either have to have a location dredged out or we'll have the pipeline actually lifted about six to eight feet off of the seafloor uh, using subsea hangers. All righty. Here's another one that asks, do the offshore operators undertake any assessments or post-processing offshore to the data, or is it all fully automated? So our data is uh, post-processed, and that information is provided to the operator. What the operator does with that data is obviously dependent upon the operator itself. Now, we provide the uh, what we call our interim inspection report, which is the individual images produced offshore and evaluated with our uh, discovery lead as well as the uh, operator rep. Then once we get back uh, to shore, we'll produce all those images in a full uh, inspection report itself. All righty. Uh, this gentleman asks, can the discovery system be used for subsea jumpers uh, and also for a riser with a very thick insulation? Is it applicable? Yes, we have done multiple jumpers. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're, we're mobilizing out uh, here pretty quick to do uh, several jumper inspections um, as long as we have access to get onto the jumper itself. Um, and what was the other one was large uh, insulated Riser something? Very, uh, for a riser with very thick insulation, is it applicable? Yeah, absolutely. The insulation doesn't uh, affect us at all. Um, so as long as we can physically uh, get the pipe or the riser within the tool itself, so again, that 26 and a half inch OD currently, uh, it won't be any problem to do. And again, we can go larger. We just have to have uh, I guess the business appetite to build a, a larger tool uh, and go from there. Sure, sure. Uh, here's a question. What is the time delay from offshore collection of data to delivery of the data to the client in a format that they can undertake the required assessments? We can uh, produce a full tomographic image within several minutes um, of the actual data landing topside. As it comes in, we're watching it nonstop. But once we get enough or collect the data itself, uh, it only takes a couple of, of minutes. Now, how long it takes them to do their assessment as far as the offshore operator, I can't answer that. But I can answer that we can provide the data within minutes. All righty. Here's another gentleman who asked, is there any limitation on the flow of the product in the pipeline? No. You don't want to elaborate or is it just simply no? Yeah, no, it, yeah, there, there's, there's, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. There, there's no limitation as far as being able to provide scan data. I, I would say if there's a limitation on a flowing flow line, there would be some limitations on us to be able to accurately identify a multi-phase flow, what was actually flowing through the flow line. However, 
as far as buildup, which is our concern, there's no issues whatsoever with with being able to identify the buildup on the wall, as long as, again, as long as there's enough spread and overall density. Which All righty. Knock on wood, we haven't run into to anything that we couldn't do so far. Great. Uh, here's uh, another uh, gentleman from uh, an operator. He says, uh, or asks you, what is the smallest pipe diameter that you can scan with the tool? So the, we, without a, uh, I guess you can say without a clamp-on bracket, we can do six inches on the lower level. We can go smaller than six inches. However, we need to have some kind of bracket that we can put, much like we did on the piggyback line, we'd have to build a bracket to go on. As far as the actual how how small can you go, ooh, uh, I would have to really, really have a look at that with our technical team, but I'd, I'd be concerned if we started getting down uh, anything smaller than probably two inches. All right, here's a simple question. How is the discovery instrument deployed? It's deployed over uh, through a crane in a subsea basket, delivered subsea. Uh, from that point, we can have the ROV come in and do a wet mate stab. And at that point, we, uh, with the ROV, have full control of the instrument to be delivered in, uh, to the pipeline and, and the data taken. So we do have our own own, our own uh, subsea basket that goes overboard. All righty. Uh, here's another one. Do you use Explore and Discovery together? We can, yes. It depends on the situation. So because Explore, <coughs> excuse me, because Explore operates under a principle of taking an average density across a single uh, cross section of the pipeline. Mm -hmm. If the pipeline has changing conditions within it, so in other words, if it's still flowing, if if you have production within that system, it becomes much more difficult to get quality data from the explorer as far as buildup. Now there are situations we can, but it, it's it's dependent on the production and so forth. Sure. However, if you have a blocked flow line and you need to take a quick idea or quick profile of the pipeline to say where do we start with discovery to start getting some of this this better in data then it's it's very very good for it however we can't tell any we can't tell the different let me start that again we can't identify the same density differences with explore as we can with discovery so in other words um, discovery is much more sensitive to density change than than uh, the Explorer technology. Sure. Uh, I have another operator question here. With regard to the ID pipeline content from the CT data, is any can anything else be used besides content density? Uh, I'm not sure I... Uh, not sure I follow that question. To ID the pipeline contents. Not sure I follow it either. We, yeah, I, I'm I'm not sure, but I, from our standpoint, not to identify from our technology, there there's we we base all of our dense or all of our um, analysis of the buildup on the pipeline is definitely density-based for our technology. Good answer. Uh, here's another one. I think we may have touched on aspects of this, but maybe you want to restate the case again. This gentleman asked, is the system able to scan vertical flexible riser? Yes. For flow assurance, vertical flexible risers are no issues whatsoever. However, from an inspection, uh, standpoint, again, I'll, I'll reference back to we have with the original system, we have scanned a flexible in a tank under test situations and we can see gross damage. 
However, we haven't done anything with our newer tools, and we have been uh, commissioned to do uh, quite a bit of blind testing through a third-party validation company as well as several major operators that are involved with that program as well. So we're, we should soon find out exactly how good we can get with uh, uh, flexible pipe. Now, we do know certain things. Obviously, internal carcass damage we can see pretty bluntly, major external damage pretty bluntly, but we need to, to better understand at what level of accuracy can we determine uh, damage within those armor, armor layers. All righty. Uh, here's one that asked, is the ROV interface directly to the tool during operations, or is it just used to position the tool on the pipe in other words, does the, do the data come up the ROV umbilical during operations? Yes, it does. So we are we are provided our power, hydraulics, and communications through the ROV, through an umbilical. So we are umbilical to the ROV. The ROV is obviously umbilical topside, and our data is coming in real-time topside. Our uh, operation of the instrument itself, once we are delivered to the pipeline by the ROV, uh, is all computer controlled by our technician. So at that point, uh, depending on the length of move needed to make. So in an integrity standpoint, when let's say we're we're trying to obtain data over a meter or two meter or five meter, a hundred percent data set, then at that point, once we're delivered by the ROV, we will step function scan, step function scan, all on our own uh, via computer operated. If we're making larger jumps or moves. Uh, for flow assurance or transferring to the next overall inspection location uh, will unclamp from the pipeline and the ROV will fly us over or move us and position us to the new location. All righty. Um, we have another operator person here who has asked, given the ability to scan a flow line while in operation, what is the temperature limitation for discovery? We trying to think of the best way to say that. There, I'm assuming that we're we're speaking under shallow water conditions where the temperature is warm. Deep water, we have no issues whatsoever. We have gone up so far successfully, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at about 80 meters. Um, I, I would have to double check with our. Uh, technical team as far as temperature, whether we're getting, at what point do we get too hot uh, to operate in, uh, because I do know with the original tool, we were about at 84, 82 degrees, uh, where we started running into temperature issues uh, on board. Uh, however, I think there's been quite a bit of development done since then, so unfortunately, I, I need to go back and, and have that question answered. Um, so if they'd like to get get in touch with me uh, after the, the, the presentation, I'll be happy to answer or get that question answered. Okay. Moving along here, uh, here's another one. Is there a shallow water depth limitation? Again, the only limitation would fall back to uh, that temperature question. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to wait on, on that uh, all centers around temperature of the tool, and our tool electronics not getting too hot. All righty. Here's Other another that, one. There's no, there's no. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no. Here's another one that asks, what type of problem did you face or or did you face at all when there was a joint in between two pipes? A joint in between two pipes. Not sure I follow that question. Not not sure I follow that either. Um, a joint between two pipes. I'm assuming maybe maybe let me let me try to answer it. Hopefully, th this is where they're going. I'm assuming you mean a step change or a diameter change 
within the you know a certain section of pipe so a transition from uh, one size pipe down to the next size pipe so depending on if if that is the case depending on the amount of change between the two pieces of pipe we can potentially do it with the same setup uh, that we currently have on the tool if not then we would have to switch out our internal brackets that would be appropriate for whatever size pipe that there is if it is a uh, a steep transition it would be difficult to get data on the transition itself but again that would be dependent on on the severity of that transition so to speak so if it's a minor transition it probably wouldn't have had that we could use the same clamp session and basically step over that section uh, then it shouldn't pose any problems at all if that transition trans uh, requires us to transition from one uh, set of adapter plates to a second set of adapter plates that could pose an issue with us actually getting inspection data over that transition section only all righty here's another one and this person asked, what type of ROV is required? Typically, we require a work class ROV, uh, just based on the size and the weight of the tool itself. So it, it, we're, we're looking at a, a tool, even with the buoyancy, uh, we're running about 250 pounds in water. Okay, okay. Uh, this gentleman asked, in a piggyback scenario, where the spacer is used to clamp around both the main pipe and piggyback pipe, how is the spacer installed? Is it diver or ROV installed? It could be either one. Okay. So we we, we can build either we can we can build the bracket either way where it's, it's easily installed via ROV and move via ROV or diver operated either one. Uh, here's another question. What is the axial length of pipe covered per scan? 15 millimeters. So each full tomographic scan is a 15 millimeter slice of the pipe. Huh. Interesting. All right, so I think we're going to wrap it up with this one. And uh, this is more of a commercial question. And the person asks, do you charge per length, per project, or per hour that the tool is in service? So we are typically a day rated technology. So it, like most applications uh, offshore, we have a day rate for our tool and crews offshore. Excellent. Well, Jim, congratulations. I believe you have answered more questions in a Q&A period on one of our webcasts than anybody else that I can remember. Um, nope. <laughs> you've done yo yeoman service here. Uh, anything else you want to add before we uh, close down? No, I just want to thank everybody uh, for, again, for taking the time to uh, uh, listen to uh, our webinar. We know how valuable everybody's time is. And uh, just with that, you know, obviously if I haven't answered any questions or if I was confusing at any part throughout the webinar, please feel free to reach out and I'll be happy to go into further further uh, depth on uh, the technology itself or, or answer any questions or get the proper answers that I may not have. All right. Very good. Thank you, Jim. And uh, we would like to thank all of you in the audience for attending today's webcast. Uh, we also would like to thank Tracerco for putting together this timely and very fine presentation. Uh, finally, one other housekeeping note here, an on-demand version of this webcast will be made available in the coming days, and it will be emailed to everyone. So on that note, thank you all, and have a great day.